holy Jesus. No, not one. No, not one. And none else can heal all our souls' diseases. No, not one. No, not one. To Jesus, Jesus knows all about our struggles. us amen from all evil he has kept us with our mind stayed on him and for that we are so grateful amen 
Amen. Right now, we're going to go before the Lord in prayer. If there's anyone who has a spoken or special request, you can stand now and let it be known or just simply by raising your hand. Sister Cora. Mm-hmm. All right. All right. Any other requests? Amen. All right, anyone else? All right, pray for our pastor that the Lord will grant him the joy of utterance today. Pray for our members of Christian ministries that God will touch their minds. Amen. Give them minds to come back to, come on back out of the house of, of the Lord. Um, pray for the sick and the afflicted everywhere. My cousin in Mississippi is still in the coma. Uh, Sometimes they say in them for months, they say. So just pray that while she's in it, the Lord will protect her mind and uh, bring her out more than a conqueror. Amen. Uh, pray for all the bereaved families all over the world. This coronavirus is hitting so many families all over the world. So remember all the bereaved families. Pray for the abused children, husbands, and wives. Uh, let's see. Oh, remember man, woman, boy, and girl in all walks of life. Pray that God will save and add to the churches daily, such as should be saved. And pray for the body of Christ everywhere. Amen? Amen. There are none others. We're going to ask you to stand. We're going to ask Bishop to come lead us in prayer. Like the morning Jesus. No, not. Nah. Come on, praise team. Help me out. No, not one. Jesus knows all about our struggles. As we get ready. And he will guide Let us gird up our minds. Is done. Focus on Jesus. And there's not a friend like, like the lonely Jesus. No, not one. No, not one. No, one not one. One more time. One. Jesus. Jesus knows, he knows all about our struggles. He can be touched. And he will guide with the feelings of your infirmity. Oh, there's not a friend like the lowly Jesus. No, not one. No, no, not one. Let every heart pray, gracious Father, in the name of Jesus. We thank you, Lord, for being our strength. We thank you for being our shield and our fortress. We thank you, Lord, for being a very present help in the time of trouble. We thank you, Lord, for being our bread when we're hungry, for being our water when we're thirsty. We thank you, Lord, for being our healer when we're sick. We thank you for being our encourager when, our, when we're depressed. Lord, we thank you, Lord, that we can cast all of our cares upon you because you care for us. We thank you, Lord, for being our burden bearer. We thank you, Lord, for being our heavy load sharer. We thank you uh, for being our leader and our guide. We thank you uh, for being our savior, our deliverer, our strong tower. We give you praise in this hour. We give you praise and glory in this moment because you are very present help in the time of trouble. Lord, we thank you, Lord, Hallelujah for making ways out of no way. For being the lover of our soul. For being the lifter of our soul in the name of Jesus. Lord we thank you Lord. Hallelujah for hearing our humble cry. Because you know 
in the name of Jesus. You know, you know what we're going through. You know our tests. You know our trials. You know our tribulations. And we know that you are the victory in the name of Jesus. So we give you thanks, Lord, as we conjure up in our hearts and our minds. We magnify your name. We give you glory and honor because there's power in your name. There is deliverance in your name. There is joy in your name. There is peace in your name. Lord, we know that victory is in your name and we call on the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus, we pray, Lord, that you bless every condition, that you bless every situation. In the name of Jesus, you bless each and every request that's been made known to you, Lord. Heal those that are grieving. Heal those that are going through in their bodies. Lord, in the name of Jesus, pull down every stronghold, every high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of God. In the name of Jesus, manifest your glory in this place. In the name of Jesus, ah, Lord, in the name of Jesus, manifest your power. Bind every evil spirit, every demonic power that would come to hinder. In the name of Jesus, Lord, you blood wash us. You cleanse us. You purge us from all of our sins, from all of our iniquities. In the name of Jesus, Lord, you save and add to the church daily such as should be saved. In the name of Jesus, Lord, call those that need to come to the house hold of faith. In the name of Jesus, Lord, go into our homes and regulate our relationships. Bless our children. Bless our finances. In the name of Jesus, regulate our minds that we may encourage ourselves in the Lord. In the name of Jesus, remove oppression. Remove depression. Remove ekabosha. In the name of Jesus, Lord, bless our hearts on today. Hallelujah. Let your glory be revealed on today. Lord, in the name of Jesus, we will lift you up. We will magnify you. We will give you thanks. We will bless your name. We will give you glory. In the name of Jesus, let everything that have breath, let everything that have breath, let everything that have breath, Praise ye the Lord in the name of Jesus. Ah, oh, we will take of the cup and cut up Shadalabasha and give glory unto the name of the Lord. In the name of Jesus. We call every crooked place straight. In the name of Jesus. Every valley shall be exalted and every hill shall be made low. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. What's his name? What's his name? What's his name? Jesus name. Amen. Come on and give the Lord a praise. Come on and give the Lord a praise. Come on and break up this fallow ground and give the Lord a praise. Uh, praise him for what you're going through. Praise him for what he's bringing you out of. Praise him for the testimony that he's already given you. Come on and praise ye the Lord. Praise him on the high symbol. Praise him on the string instrument. Let everything that have breath praise ye the Lord. Praise ye the Lord. Praise ye the Lord. There's a praise in the house. I said there's a praise in the house. Ah, there's a praise in the house. We ought to praise him. Look back over your life. You ought to praise him. Look for where you are right now. You ought to praise him. Looking at your future. Hey, hallelujah. You ought to praise ye the Lord. Praise him. Hallelujah. We owe God a praise. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise is comely to the righteous. Amen. Hallelujah. We're made a praise. Hallelujah. That's our purpose here is to praise him. Hallelujah. We came to praise. Amen. Hallelujah. A praise is always down in your heart. Hallelujah. A praise is always in your mouth. Hallelujah. 
Alleluia. Praise is comely. Alleluia. For the righteous. Amen. Alleluia. I'd like to invite your attention to the 19th division of Psalms. Alleluia. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Yes. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. I should have had that scripture ready that praises calmly for the righteous. Amen. Something that's just automatic. Hallelujah. You've always got a praise down in your heart for the Lord. Praise is always in your mouth. Amen. Hallelujah. Uh, I'm going to start reading at verse 7. Amen. The law of the Lord is perfect, converting the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure, making wise the simple. The statutes of the Lord are right, rejoicing the heart. The commandment of the Lord is pure, enlightening the eyes. The fear of the Lord is clean, enduring forever. The judgments of the Lord are true and righteous altogether. Let's skip down to 14. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength. Praise and praise team. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord, everybody. Hallelujah. We're coming to praise the Lord. Hallelujah. He's been awesome. Hallelujah. Come on. Begin to feel the atmosphere. There's nobody like you. Hallelujah. Praise is what I do. Hallelujah. We owe God a praise. We were made to praise him. Hallelujah. Yeah. Oh, we bless your name today. Praise is what I do. Praise is who I am. Hallelujah. We say, Lord, you are our son. Lord, you are our song. Help me say, Lord. Lord, you are our song. Come on, fill the air, say, Lord. Lord, you are our song. Come on, stay right there, say, Lord. Lord, you are our song. There's nobody like you, Lord. Lord. If it wasn't for, if it wasn't for your love, wasn't for your I don't know where I'd be without you. Come on, if it wasn't for, if it wasn't for your love, I don't know, I don't know where I'd be without you. Lord, you are awesome. Nobody like you, Lord. Lord, you are awesome. Did he ever come to your rescue, Lord? Lord, you are awesome. I'll praise you with my heart. Lord, you are awesome. If it wasn't for, if it wasn't for your love. Was it for your grace? I don't know. I don't know where I'd be without you. If it wasn't for, if it wasn't for your love, for, if it wasn't for your grace, I don't know. I don't know where I'd be without you. Lord, you are awesome. 
always my feet on solid ground. You are awesome. 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 You told me to run on. 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 He said, don't be discouraged, my child. He told me to run on. He told me to run. He said, Don't look back no more. He told me to run. He told me to run. He told me to run. Yeah, 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 yeah. Said he told me to run. He told me to run. Don't be discouraged, my child. He told me to run. Just look to the hills from which comes your help. Realizing that. He told, from the Lord. To he told me to run on. 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 If it wasn't for your love, wasn't for your grace, I don't know where I'd be without you. If that's your testimony today, somebody ought to praise him. Come on, don't pity pack him. He didn't pity pack you when he died for you. Somebody ought to praise him. Open your mouth and praise the Lord. Let everything that has breath praise him. Let everything that has breath praise him. Come on, ask your neighbor, are you breathing? Then you ought to be praising the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, you're wonderful. You're awesome. You're awesome. You're awesome. It's worship time in the sanctuary. Hallelujah. You're awesome, God. Hallelujah. We create an atmosphere for worship. Hallelujah. You're wonderful, God. There's nobody like you. You're Yahweh. Hallelujah. You hung the heavens and the sky. Hallelujah. You created everything. There's nobody like you, God. There's nobody like you. Hallelujah. We give you our lives today, God. We submit our lives unto you again. We give you a fresh yes today. Hallelujah. We give you a fresh yes today, God. Hallelujah. You're awesome, God. You're awesome, God. My God is awesome. He can move mountains. Keep me in the valley and hide me from the rain. My God is awesome. He heals me when I'm broken. Strength where I've been weakened, forever he will reign. My God, my God is awesome. He can move, he can move mountains. Keep, keep me in the valley and hide me, and hide me from the rain.
grace is why I'm living. Grace is why I'm living. Grace is holiness. Grace is holiness. My God is awesome. Come on, let's magnify His name. Awesome. Oh, He's awesome. He's mighty. 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 He's m
Just keep light in the darkness, my God. That is who you are. Hallelujah. Put your hands together for Jesus. Thank Hallelujah. You, God bless you. Has the Lord ever done anything for you? Has he ever brought you out of anything? Hallelujah. He is a way maker and a promise keeper. Amen. Hallelujah. I don't know what I'd do if the Lord wasn't in my life. Amen. Amen. Where would I be? Amen. Be like a ship without a sail. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank the Lord. Amen. God is a good God, and he's worthy to be praised. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. At this time, I'd like to ask if anyone celebrated an anniversary. I know we have a birthday today. Amen. Amen. It's Sister Yolanda Hall's birthday today. Amen. 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 What a blessing. There's so many people that went to sleep last night. They didn't wake up this morning, amen? Amen. We're so glad to see Sister LaTanya out today, amen? Amen. I know it's a press for her, amen? So when she presses her way out, it's a blessing, amen? Amen. God is good, amen? Amen. At this time, we're going to bring forth the uh, afternoon announcements. I only have one. Amen. The Naipain Global Missions Rice Bowl Drive. We started it August 1st and, and, 1st and it ends October 1st. And sister, uh, Mother Louise Davis has a, a rice bowl. It's for the Ways and Means Committee. And it will be handed over in the October Council. All funds submitted will be go towards the World Hunger Project. Amen. And Pastor V. Marilyn Mathis is the chair lady of it. Amen. So uh, when we take our offering, after Deacon Fields takes the offering, Sister Mother Davis will go around with her rice bowl, and we ask that you put some change in it, whatever you have. Amen? Amen. And I'd like to let the saints know that we're back in our regular uh, schedule of services. Amen? Sunday school's on Sunday at 9.30, and Bible class is Wednesday at 6 o'clock p.m. And our morning service on Sunday starts at 11 a.m. Amen? Amen. It's good to be back on a regular schedule. Amen? Amen. And we've been having some good Bible classes, so come on out to Bible class. Uh, not yet. Uh, but you can still pray on Thursday at, at your home. Amen? Amen. <laughs> Amen. Just don't stop praying. Amen. It says pray with ceasing. Amen. All right. All right. At this time, I'm asking Deacon Fields to come up. It's blessing time. Amen. Amen. God loves a cheerful giver. And we can't beat him giving. Amen. Amen. God just gives. The more we give, the more he gives. And sometimes it's not always an, uh, a monetary blessing. It's your health, your strength, amen? Amen. It don't, don't look for money blessings or, or or material blessings, amen? He protects you from all hurt, harm, and danger, seen and unseen. He, would, he said he would rebuke, rebuke the devourer, amen? Amen. So it's not always material stuff, your houses and cars and all that stuff. Sometimes God just blesses you with more life, amen? Amen, because there's so many times I know I've been almost hit by cars or almost hit somebody myself, you know, but God, but God, you step right in, amen, amen, and I thank him for that, amen. Father, we come before you in the mighty name of Jesus. We're asking, Lord, that you'll bless this offering, Lord, and we thank you, Lord, for the opportunity to be able to give and to sow into your kingdom one more time. We're asking, Lord, that you'll bless all those that give and bless all those that don't have to give. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. 
I ask everyone to stand in your prospective places, please. Thank you, Jesus. For he is good. Yes, he is good. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord. For he is good. Yes, he is good. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord. For he is good. Yes, he is good. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord. For he is good. Yes, he is good. The Lord is worthy. He's worthy. For he is good. Yes, he is good. The Lord is worthy. He's worthy, for he is good. Yes, he is good. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good. Yes, he is good. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good. Yes, he is good. The Lord is worthy. He's worthy. For he is good. Yes, he is good. The Lord is worthy. He's worthy. For he is good. Yes, he is good. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord. For he is good, yes, he is good. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good, yes, he is good. The Lord is worthy, oh, yes, he's worthy, for he is good, yes, he is good. The Lord is worthy. He's worthy, for he is good. Yes, he is good. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good. Yes, he is good. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good. Yes, he is good. Come on and give the Lord a praise. <laughs> you may be seated in the presence of the Lord. And it's just good to be back in the house of the Lord one more time. And we certainly do give honor to whom honor is due. And we praise and thank the Lord for how he woke us up this morning. And he literally started us on our way and give us the strength to even come out on today and even the heart and the mind to want to praise him. Not everybody has that type of faculty to want to praise the Lord. So you ought to give God thanks if you got that mind to lift up the name of Jesus. Amen. To lift up the name of the Lord. And we certainly do. Thank you, Pastor. I was looking for that. We certainly praise God uh, for our lovely wife, Tracy Quinn. We thank God for her. Amen. Pastor Duck, Mother Davis, and our deacons. We thank God. Uh, also, too, for our media team, God is good, and our ushers, and our praise, and our worship team. We certainly do praise God for each and every one of you. Amen. And Sister uh, Latanya was here, and uh, we thank God for her and her son coming out on today. Praise God for that. We thank God for Brother Dave being back in our midst. Amen. Amen. God is a good God. Amen. Thank you, Lord. We praise God for that. Praise God for each and every one of you that press your way and come out to the household of faith. Amen? Amen. We don't count it as a light thing uh, just being here. Amen? And um, just one other announcement that was here um, that goes in connection with the uh, funds that Sister Louise is uh, collecting. <clears throat> we also have our October council that will be coming up October 23rd and 24th and the registration in for that is $10 per person and please uh, see Sister, Louis, uh, Sister 
uh, Yolanda, uh, the birthday girl. Amen. And please uh, register for our council. It's going to be a virtual council, and um, it's going to be on Zoom and Facebook Live and um, and uh, our Night Pain States Council web. And it's going to be an awesome uh, uh, meeting and empowerment sessions. And also, too, we got two national uh, evangelists that's going to be our speakers, evangelist Virginia Bowie uh, out of Chicagoland, uh, dynamic uh, missionary uh, speaker, woman of God. And also, too, uh, for our Saturday night speaker, uh, it's going to be elder or pastor, Pastor uh, Dorian Kent. Amen. Pastor Dor, dynamic uh, speaker, preacher. Amen. And you won't, don't want to miss that. Amen. I was, um, yesterday, there was, I was looking at through Facebook and I saw um, that in uh, uh, Joliet, Illinois, they had a convention going on. And um, I was listening to the preacher and the preacher was preaching. And I'm sitting over there getting excited. And it just felt like I was in the service. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. My wife said, you look like you're enjoying yourself. Amen. Amen. It's just good to, to, to be under the word and to hear the word of God and to be able to rejoice and see the saints rejoicing. Amen. I learned that uh, whatever state we're in, we ought to give God praise. Whatever condition and whatever, whatever situation we're in, we ought to give God praise. That's why I got uh, so excited about the scripture that Pastor Duck quoted about it's comely for the saints to praise their God, meaning that it's a natural thing. And I told her, I said, like, when you go down to Lake Erie, you expect to see water. When you come to the house of God, God expects you to praise him. God expects you to give him glory. God expects him to you to magnify the name of the Lord. Do y'all believe that today? Amen. Do y'all believe that today? Amen. And we certainly do thank God uh, for all those that are listening to us uh, through Facebook Live. Amen. We praise God for you. And you also have an opportunity to give through our Tidely. And we thank God uh, for the giving that goes on through Tidely. People use Tidely. Uh, and we thank God for that. Uh, to help build the kingdom of God, to help move God's kingdom along. And we thank God for all our viewers and all our supporters. And we want you just to share, amen, share your links with others so they may join in and hear what thus saith the Lord. And as we get ready to move into our scriptures on today, thank you, Lord. I'm so excited uh, about the Lord and about what he's doing in our lives. And we ought to just take time out just to even think uh, about what God is doing in our lives. And as that song says that even though we may not see him and even though we may not feel him, he's still moving. Amen. He's still working. Do you believe that on today? That the Lord is still working it out. Amen. We used to sing a song that said, Lord, work it out. And Jesus will work it out if you let him. <laughs> uh, do you believe that today? Thank you, Lord. Amen. So as we get ready to go into the word of the Lord, uh, I want you to turn with me to the book of Acts, the book of Acts, the Acts of the Apostles, uh, chapter number four. And if you could Stand with me. I'd greatly appreciate it. Acts chapter number four. And before we get uh, to reading the word of God, as you are standing, those that you can, that can stand, we want you to stand. And as we get ready to go before the Lord in prayer, we want to uh, look to the Lord for he is our help. He is our strength. Let every heart pray. Gracious Father, in the name of Jesus, we ask you, Lord, that you look upon us right now, that you strengthen us and give us what we need in this hour, that we may praise you, that we may worship you, that we may accentuate your value, that we may count you worthy 
in the name of Jesus. And Lord, we ask you that you look beyond all of our faults and that you see our need, that you focus our hearts on thee because you are the only one that can help us. You are the only one that can deliver us. You are the only one that makes ways for us that are legitimate, that are righteous, that are holy. And Lord, we thank you as we rebuke the hand of the enemy and we put on the whole armor of God that we might be able to stand. And Lord, we pray that you grant the door of utterance in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. And as you are standing in the presence of the Lord, as you are standing on holy ground, or you are standing uh, because he has given you strength, because he has given you all that you need to be able to stand. So stand, therefore, as we're looking at the book of Acts, chapter number 4 and verse 31. And the scripture says, and they prayed. And when they had prayed, uh, the place was shaken where they were assembled together. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost. And they spake the word of God with boldness. And let me read that again in your hearing. It says, and when they had prayed, when they had prayed, uh, they, the place was shaken where they were assembled together. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost. And they spake the word of God with boldness. And I just want to take a uh, thought from that particular scripture. Feel me. Feel me, Lord. Feel me, Lord. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. And uh, I just want to look at that scripture one more time. It says, and when they had prayed, when they had prayed, the place was shaken where they were assembled together. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost. And they spake the word of God with boldness. They spake God's word with boldness. And as we uh, have to ask ourselves this particular question is that how did we get to this point? What has transpired or what transpired to bring us to this point? And if you understand and read Acts chapter number four, you would understand it's really a continuation of Acts chapter number three. And in chapter number three, it was Paul and John that encountered the lame man and they had said unto the lame man that silver and gold have I none, but such as I have give I unto thee in the name of Jesus Christ, rise up and walk. And Peter, the Bible says, stretched out his hand and immediately the man received strength in his ankle bones. The Bible says he received strength and he then did something he'd never done before. He begins to leap and to walk and to praise God. And while he was praising God and leaping and walking, he caught the attention of those that were around him. And they start to believe in the power of Jesus Christ. And But there were some people that were there that didn't like their blessing. There were some people that were there that had something to say about the man's healing. And you know, that goes to show you that not everybody is going to be happy about your success. Not everybody is going to be excited when the Lord does something good for you. Uh, not everybody is going to reach out and shout up for joy when the Lord is blessing you. So don't be discouraged. Just realize that it's just a part of nature. But the Bible tells the saints of God to rejoice with them that rejoice and, and weep with them that weep. We ought to praise God for the blessings of those that are in the midst of us. We ought to give thanks unto God when God does something good for any one of us. 
Amen. We ought to bless the name of the Lord. So we see here in the book of Acts in chapter number four that uh, Peter and John, they went before the council, which was made up of the Pharisees and the Sadducees for the healing of the lame man, because they became to preach in the name of Jesus. So they were, a council was gathered together so to examine what was done unto this lame man. And uh, Peter and John were called up because they were the ones that were the perpetrators of this particular miracle. And they wanted to examine them because a notable miracle had been done. And when we see here that the Sadducees were literally the leaders that were really grieved because uh, they taught the people and preached through Jesus the resurrection from the dead because the Sadducees they didn't really believe in that doctrine. They didn't really believe that uh, the one could be raised up from the dead. And they were sad because they had preached that doctrine and because that above 5,000 men were saved as they heard the words of Peter and John being preached. And when they preach the doctrine of salvation, when they preach the doctrine of the resurrection from the dead, they got a little disturbed and angry and upset. You know, there's a lot of people, I'm remembering the uh, beloved Apostle Paul who said even himself that even in this life, if we only have hope in Jesus, we are all being most miserable. I don't know about you, but I'm looking forward to the resurrection. I'm looking forward to Jesus cracking the sky and saying one day, come my people. And I, I believe, I believe. Do you believe that Jesus said that he is the resurrection and the life? That he that cometh to him must believe. And, and if you believe that Jesus is the resurrection, that he said that you shall never die. I believe. I, I believe that the resurrection is not an event, but I believe that the resurrection is a person and that person is Jesus Christ. I, I believe that Jesus is the resurrection. I, I receive of that doctrine because one day that belief is going to get me out of the grave. That one day, if I don't go by the grave, that one day he's going to crack the sky. And the Bible says that the Lord is going to descend from heaven with a shout. Uh, with the voice of the archangel and the dead in Christ are going to rise up first and that we that are alive and remain uh, uh, we that are alive and remain we that are alive and remain we that are alive alive with his spirit uh, alive with his anointing we that are alive that have been baptized in the name of Jesus and have been filled with the Holy Ghost and have all our sins washed away. We that are alive that remain are going to be caught up uh, together to meet the Lord in the air. Uh, so when people tell you uh, that don't you believe in the resurrection, you tell them that I believe. Uh, you're already too late. I've already been to the water. I've, I've already been baptized. I've already been converted. I, I've already been believing and trusting in the Lord. So uh, you some days you're going to be called out for what you believe. And that's what Peter and John were doing. They were being persecuted for what they believed. They were being called out among the leaders about what they believe. And you know, sometimes in my sanctified mind, I've just believed that they were mad because Jesus had already turned them out. Uh, the Sadducees and the Pharisees, he had already uh, showed them what uh, they were dealing with. They were, he had already confounded them. He had already set them in amazement, my God. And they were upset because Jesus uh, was being preached and people were getting saved. The people were getting delivered. The Bible says that about 5,000 
thousand uh, just men got saved. And, and you know the history says at that moment when Peter and John was preaching about the lame man that another 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 7,000 got saved. And, and you know people got delivered. People got set free where it was about 10,000 people. Oh my God. What a movement that Jesus was starting because if you remember in the book of Acts, the book of Acts uh, uh, in the first chapter when uh, Peter was preaching and, and then we go to the second chapter uh, and the Holy Ghost had fell on them and uh, they said what is this and Peter said this is that which was spoken of by the prophet Joel and, and you know Peter uh, he begins to preach unto them and he begins to tell them about Jesus and, and then in the end they said what must we do to be saved and uh, y'all know the story he told them repent ye uh, repent ye every one of you and be baptized uh, in the name of Jesus for the remission of your sins and ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Peter preached the word that convicted and pricked the heart of those that were there. And the Bible says that above 3,000 got saved. My God, 3,000 souls. Can you imagine brothers and sisters baptizing 3,000 souls? I, I'd put them all in the lake and have them all go down at one time <laughs> in the name of Jesus. My God. And they, and, and they were filled up with the gift of the Holy Ghost. So no reason why the Pharisees and the Sadducees got a little nervous because uh, a mega church was about to emerge. Uh, yeah, I feel the word of God that was coming that Jesus told Peter and he said, upon this rock, I'm going to build my church and the gates of hell, the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. A mega church was about to emerge, uh, a church with power, a church with the anointing, a church that walked with miracle signs and wonders, uh, a church that had a deliverance, a church that had a word hallelujah from the Lord and oh my God no wonder the people get nervous when you get anointed and you begin to walk with God the people around you will get nervous they, they want to know what is this oh that gives you joy when you should be sad they, they want to know what is this oh my God they, they want to know what power and what by might that you've done so great in miracle works in the Lord my my God, my God, my God, you got to tell them that this is that uh, which was spoken of by the prophet Joel. This is that, hallelujah, that uh, came by flesh and blood that died on the cross and gave his life as a ransom that, that I believed on him as the scriptures have said and out of my belly. Oh, it flowed rivers of living water. I believe that Jesus is the Christ. I believe that he is. Oh my God, I believe that he's the Alpha and the Omega and the beginning and the end. Don't, don't look at me, but look at the power that rides within me. Oh my God, I feel the Holy Ghost up in here. Oh my God, there's an anointing up in here. Do you believe that Jesus is the Christ. Do you believe that Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life? Do you believe that he has all power, that he has all anointing, that he can do exceedingly and abundantly above that which you are able to ask or think? Do you believe that my God, do you believe that he has power? You ought to clap your hands and give God some glory. You ought to clap your hands and give God a praise. And as we move forward on our scriptures, we can see why the Pharisees and the Sadducees, they all got together and they begin to talk about Peter and John. The scripture says that they actually laid their hands on them and they put them in jail because they heard the 
the word and believed. Oh my God, they actually got thrown in jail because they were trying to preach Jesus Christ and him crucified. They actually got thrown in jail by preaching Jesus Christ. You know why people get upset with you when you start to preach Jesus and him crucified? You upset their program. You expose their sins. And some people are glad that they're sinners. Some people are happy and rebel in their sinful ways. Oh, but man or woman of God, don't be surprised when you tell them that you're saved, that they get upset with you and that they want to kick you out of their presence. Uh, that they want to do some evil things to you. Uh, think it not strange uh, concerning the fiery trials uh, that come up against you uh, as some strange thing uh, has happened unto you. Oh, but they threw them in jail until the next day when they could have their counsel. And they questioned them. And the Bible says that a number of 5,000, they got saved. And they were starting a movement by building the kingdom of God. And then they begin to ask Peter a question. Uh, they said to him by what power uh, or by what name have you done this uh, they were asking him a question Pastor Duck uh, about what power uh, or by what name have you done this uh, well brothers and sisters uh, and sisters and brothers uh, you have to give an answer uh, according to the salvation uh, that is in you uh, when anybody ask you uh, by what name or by what power uh, are you living this life uh, you've got to tell them uh, it's by the power uh, of Jesus uh, what they were asking him was uh, when they said what power uh, or what authority uh, uh, do you do these miracles uh, and these signs and these wonders uh, Peter was letting them know uh, that it's not by my own power it's not by my own might but it's by the name of Jesus you've got to let people know uh, that you've been with Jesus and that how you live this life it's by his power it's by his authority it's through his grace if it had not been for the Lord on our side there's no telling where we would be. I see why David said, What shall I render unto the Lord for all of his goodness? He said, I will take of the cup of salvation and I will call on the name of the Lord. How many of you know that the name of the Lord is a strong tower? And the righteous runneth in, and they are safe. When they ask Peter about how did you get saved and by what authority, Peter stood flat foot within the council, and it said, It's by the name of Jesus. He said, The one whom you took and crucified and hung on tree. It was God, God's predetermined counsel that he raised him from the dead. And it's this same Jesus and it is in his name that in him are the name given unto heaven whereby men must be saved. He was telling them it's not in the name of Moses. It's not in the name of Abraham. It's not in the name of David. But it's in the name of Jesus. It's in the name of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus. There is deliverance in the name of Jesus. The devil's tremble at that name oh my God heaven and earth has to line up when you call on the name 
name of Jesus. When the enemy comes in against you like a flood, the Bible says that the Spirit of the Lord, it will lift up a standard against the enemy. Why? Because he has to have respect unto name of Jesus. There's no other name. The name of Buddha. It can't save you. The name of Muhammad. It can't save you. There's no other name. When you call on that name, you should expect power. You should expect deliverance. You should expect yokes to be destroyed. You should expect salvation. You should expect help to come and that right early when you call on that name oh my god heaven and earth has to line up because he said whatever you ask in my name it shall be you ought to give god a praise oh yes so peter was asked by what power or by what authority and peter replied it's by the name of jesus whom you crucified whom god raised from the dead have made this man strong my god when you call on the name of the lord you can be expect to be made strong he said let the weak say that they're strong when you call on the name of Jesus and you reach out by faith you should expect your deliverance oh my God if you've got any yokes that needs to be destroyed you've got to call on the name of Jesus if the devil is on your track trying to turn you back you've got to call on the name of Jesus if you're sick in your body and don't know what to do you've got to call on the name of Jesus if you're broke busted and disgusted you've got to call on the name of Jesus for the Lord is he is our strength the Lord is he is our refuge the Lord is he is our help in the time of trouble don't let the devil steal your joy don't let the devil steal the power from you that is in the name of Jesus there is deliverance in the name there is power in the name if you lay hands on the sick they shall recover if you call on the name of Jesus what's his name what's his name what's his name oh my god y'all can be seated just for a moment as we come to our first conclusion you see brothers and sisters uh peter and john they didn't care about what would happen to them they were so excited the first time they got beat they were so excited that they were counted worthy to suffer for the name of Jesus and that's where we have to be we've got to get our mind off of our own selves we've got to get our minds on Jesus who is the author and the finisher of your faith you've got to turn your life around around and focus it in on Jesus it's not about silver it's not about gold it's about what Paul said in him I live in him I move in him I have my being is that your testimony in him you live in him you move in him you have your being 
Oh my God. You see, sometimes, sometimes we live this life thinking that we're living it unto ourselves. Sometimes we think that we're all alone and that our praise and then our worship that it doesn't count or that it doesn't matter but I stop by to tell you that's, that's a little stinking thinking uh, that the enemy likes to put in our hearts he doesn't want you to know that there is deliverance in the name of Jesus he doesn't want you to try him he doesn't want you to call on him because in the day and the hour that you call all on the name of the Lord uh, and be serious about uh, your walk with him uh, you can receive uh, you can receive deliverance uh, you can receive uh, your breakthrough uh, I'm reminded uh, of the woman with the issue of blood uh, after she had tried everything else uh, after she had tried some marijuana after she had tried some Hennessy, after she had tried to go a downstairs lover, the Bible says she was none the better. But she went to a meeting one night, and her heart just wasn't right. And a lot of people were in the crowd, but her faith said, But if I can but touch the hem of his garment, I shall be made whole. I shall be made clean. Brothers and sisters, sisters and brothers, you've got to have that kind of faith when you come to the household of God. You've got to believe that nowhere else can I find my help but in the presence of the Lord. Nowhere else can I find my deliverance but it's in Jesus. I tried my lover. I tried my reefers. I tried my alcohol. I tried my money. Let me try. Let me try. Let me try. Him that was founded upon a rock. Let me try. That true cornerstone. That sure foundation. Let me try. Him that has been tried down through the years. Came up glorious, came up victorious with all power in heaven and in earth. Let me try Jesus, the lily of the valley, the bright and morning star. Let me try, let me try him who is able to save to the uttermost. You ought to clap your hands. And give God a praise. Oh God. My God in heaven. You see Peter and John. After they. Had explained their case. The Bible says. That the Sadducees. And the Pharisees. They put them out. Of their presence. They put them out to confer what they want to do about them. You know, brothers and sisters, sisters and brothers, people may put you out of their presence, but God is still in control. People may have a meeting about you to do destructive things to you, but you got to say, but God, but God, God is on my side. I may not be at the table, but God is in the room. God is in control. Do you believe? that on today? Do you believe that God is in control? That God is in control? Do you believe that 
God is on the throne. Uh, do you believe that he has your best interests at heart? Do you believe that God knows the thoughts that he thinks towards you? Not thoughts of evil, but thoughts of peace to bring you to your expected end. Oh my God. So God was in the room as they were counseling together. God orchestrated the council to tell them, I don't want you to beat them. I don't want you to mistreat them. I just want you to let them go. And that's what they did. When they came out of the room, they said, we're not going to beat you. But we're going to not mistreat you. But we're going to let you go. But we're going to charge you that you speak not any more longer in that name. And here comes Peter. He said, whether I should believe you or God, you be the judge, but I can't help but to preach in that name. I can't help but to testify in that name. Somebody, everybody need to give God praise. When the enemy tries to stop you, you should stay Stand up. Somebody say stand up. Stand up for Jesus. Stand up for righteousness. Stand up for holiness. Stand up for glory. Stand up for honor. I can't help but to talk about Jesus. I can't help but to talk about the lover of my soul. You ought to give God a praise. You ought to give your God a praise, my God. So as you see, uh, Peter and John, the Bible says that they went back to the brethren after they had stood up and testified about Jesus after they have gone through what they had went through after they were inquired about after they were put on the spot after they were singled out for magnifying for giving God praise for worshiping the king of kings and the lord of lords the bible said that they went back to the brethren they went back to the people of their camp and they begin to testify about all the things that were done unto them they begin to tell them that look these people are trying to stop us from preaching. These people are trying to stop us from giving God glory. Oh, somebody say, let the preacher preach. Let the preacher preach preach. You can't stop God's anointed. You can't stop God's power. You can't stop the child of God for this joy that we have. The world didn't give it and the world can't take it away. You can't stop a true child of God for that true child of God says greater is he that is in me than in he that is in the world. A true child of God will call a prayer meeting as they call a prayer meeting and they begin to pray. They begin to pray for the apostles. They begin to pray that God's anointing would rest upon them that they may speak the wonderful word of God in boldness. And the Bible says, as they were praying, they prayed that God would continue his miracle signs and wonders in their life. You see, the devil is trying to destroy you. 
The devil don't want the miracles of God to be made manifest in your life. Oh, the devil don't want you to have a testimony that God is real. I can feel him in my hands. I can feel him in my feet. I can feel the Lord all over. The devil don't want you to talk about how God is able to take you out of the dope house and bring you to the Christian house where you can be saved set free and delivered the devil don't want you to tell about how God took you out of the whole house cleaned you up gave you a husband gave you some children made you the mother of the church the devil don't want you to tell how good how good God is how he provided on a day basis uh, to have that testimony uh, and say I was young uh, but now I'm old uh, I've never seen the righteous uh, forsaken uh, or a seed uh, begging bread uh, the devil don't want you uh, to experience God's healing uh, in your body uh, you may be suffering uh, you may be going through uh, but they that wait uh, upon the Lord, uh, they shall uh, renew their strength. Uh, they shall mount up uh, at wings of eagles. Uh, they shall walk uh, and not faint. Uh, they that wait uh, on the power uh, of the resurrected Christ, uh, they that wait uh, on the Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, they shall be renewed, they shall be restored, they shall be refilled, they shall be refreshed. The next time the enemy comes up against you, you need to pray and pray the word and say, Lord, Behold their threatenings. Behold their threatenings. Behold what they're trying to do. They tried it on your anointed. They tried it on your Savior. And now they're trying it on me. And the Lord, the Bible said, as they prayed, immediately there was a shaking. There was an earthquake. When you pray, immediately. God is able to shake, shake your situation loose. God is able to cause an earthquake to come. Suddenly, he'll show up. Suddenly, he'll show out. Suddenly, he'll break the bands of wickedness. Suddenly, he'll give you joy. Suddenly, he'll refresh your body. He'll refresh your your mind. He'll refresh your soul. Suddenly he'll anoint you from the crown of your head to the sole of your feet. Suddenly, he'll give you power. After that, the Holy Ghost has come. Suddenly. Somebody say suddenly. Shout out Tell your neighbor they mess with the wrong one. I know him that is able to keep me from falling. I know him that is able to save my soul. I know him that is able to turn my situation around. I know him. We need to say, Lord, refill me. What I like about what the brothers was preaching was the fact that they didn't focus on the enemy. They focused on what they was trying to stop. You gotta, 
not focus on the enemy. You got to focus on what the enemy is trying to stop. They were trying to stop the power of Jesus. They were trying to stop the kingdom of God. They were trying to stop them from their purpose. They were trying to stop them from their blessing. They were trying to stop the glory of God from manifesting in your life. They were trying to kill their joy, kill their peace. So they called on him. Brothers and sisters, sisters and brothers, when they got through praying, the Bible said that God gave them courage. <laughs> courage and boldness. You may not feel like you can make it. You may not feel like you can go any further. If you feel like that today and you leave out of here the same way, shame on you. Because all you got to do is pray. <laughs> all you got to do is call on Jesus. And you ain't got to be eloquent. You ain't got to be studious. All you got to say is, Lord, help. Lord, help. Lord, help. The Bible say a broken spirit and a contrite heart. Huh? He will in no wise despise. Lord, help me. And then suddenly, suddenly, the Lord is able to destroy your yoke. The Lord is able to turn your situation around. The Lord is able to help you suddenly. Somebody say suddenly. He'll cause an earthquake to happen suddenly. He did it in Acts chapter 2. Uh, suddenly an, an earthquake came. He did it further down in the books of Acts when Paul and Silas was in the jail. An earthquake came. Hallelujah. Peter was locked bound in jail. And the angel came and loosed him suddenly. I feel like changing the title of my sermon. Call it suddenly. Hey, hallelujah. Suddenly the Lord is able to show up in your situation. Suddenly the Lord is able to move your mountain. Suddenly the Lord is able to heal your body. Suddenly the Lord is able to turn your situation around. Some of us carry a lot of guilt. Some of us carry a lot of shame. Some of us carry a lot of burden. Ah, uh, but he's the guilt bearer. He's the burden bearer. He's that heavy load share. All you got to do is cast your care upon him and suddenly, some of us have low self-esteem. Hey, my God, but, but when you've been with Jesus, he's able to give you courage. He's able to give you boldness. He wants you to be lined up against the whole army. Ah, uh, for when the army comes up against me, hey, the Spirit of the Lord will lift up. David said, the Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? He said, the Lord is. Do you feel that way? The Lord is. He's the strength of my life. What he was really saying was, he's the marrow in my bones. The marrow in your bones gives you strength. The marrow in your bones give you life. If the Lord is your marrow, if the Lord is your strength, huh, who shall you be afraid of? Hallelujah. My God. My God. I'm preaching my own self happy. Hallelujah. The beauty of God is when I even look back over my own situations and Think about what I was going through before I got saved. Some people knew me. Some of y'all knew me. Hallelujah. Before I got saved. And I was a mess. Believe me. <laughs> Somebody say we all were. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. By God. 
I ain't trying to put no flowers on myself, but I think I was the messiest one here. <laughs> but but y'all say y'all were, so I ain't going to argue with you. <laughs> Messy! And it looked like God, God loves cleaning up a mess. <laughs> I said God loves cleaning up a mess. Hallelujah. Pastor Quinn was strung out, dope addicted, uh, alcohol, uh, uh, thought I was a player, all that mess. Uh, trickster, lie. Oh, I, I love the lie. Oh, Jesus. It looked like I was so good at lying, I believe my own lies. Huh. See, if you're going to be a good lie, I'm trying to teach you. If you're going to be a good lie, you got to believe them lies. No. Don't, don't take that. Don't take that. Hallelujah. But I was believing them lies. And then it's, it's my brother that lived with me, Robert. Because he saw me. He saw me at my worst. And he said, Frank, he often say that. He even said that to this day, 30 years later. Frank, I don't know how you do it, man. I ain't know how you did it. You just made a change. It was like day and night. You changed. Huh? That's because I met him. That's because I fell in love with Jesus. Amen? It wasn't me. It was Jesus. Huh? He allowed the enemy to beat me. He allowed the enemy to overcome me. Wherein I can just had to call on the name of the Lord. And when I called on his name out of sincerity, out of a broken spirit and a contrite heart, he saved me. Hallelujah. When you call on the name of the Lord from a broken spirit and a contrite heart, he will save you. He will deliver you. And he'll do it suddenly. I didn't have to be weaned from elm drug. I didn't have to be weaned from elm woman. I didn't have to be weaned from elm alcohol. I didn't have to be weaned from cigarettes. I didn't have to be weaned from lying and cheating and stealing. Hey, it was suddenly because I called on the name. Somebody said he's the same today, yesterday, and forever. If you call on the name, let the church stand. Hallelujah. Waymaker, miracle worker. Light in the darkness, oh. my God, that is who you are. Do you believe he's a waymaker on today? Yeah. Waymaker, miracle worker. Promise Those of you that need prayer, just raise your hand. Hallelujah. That is who you are. Hallelujah. We're going to ask Pastor Duck to pray for all those that raise their hand. If you want to get saved, if you want to get delivered, just turn your life over to Jesus. If you want to be baptized in the name of Jesus, we've got clothes for you to change into, and we've got water for you to be baptized in. Father, we come before you in the mighty name of Jesus. All those, Lord, that raise their hands, we're asking, Lord, that you'll touch their hearts. Compel them, Lord, to walk with you, Lord, as never before. You touch their hearts and give them a mind, Lord, to be saved before it's everlasting too late. And, Lord, we're asking that you'll lead them and guide them into all truth. Fill them, Lord, with the precious gift of the Holy Ghost and give them the love of Jesus deep down in their heart. And we praise you for the victory right now in Jesus.